Good morning. Good morning to everyone who is here and everyone joining us online. This is a particularly special Sunday. This is the Sunday when we celebrate the great cloud of witnesses, all the saints, all saints Sunday. And you have found Bloomington uh, Episcopal Church in Indiana, or Trinity Episcopal Church in Bloomington, Indiana. In a moment, we will begin to worship.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the book of Daniel. In the first year of King Belshazzar of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head as he lay in bed. Then he wrote down the dream. I, Daniel, saw in my vision by night the four winds of heaven stirring up the great sea, and four great beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was troubled within me, and the visions of my head terrified me. I approached one of the attendants to ask him the truth concerning all this. So he said that he would disclose to me the interpretation of the matter. As for these four great beasts, four kings shall arise out of the earth, but the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever and ever. The word of the Lord. The psalm will be read responsibly by half verse. 
Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. And the Lord support the victory. Let the faithful rejoice and triumph. Let them be joyful on their heads. Let the praises of God be in their throat. And the two-edged sword in their hand. To wreak vengeance on the nations. And punishment on the peoples. To bind their kings in chains. And their nobles in chains to inflict on them the judgment decreed. A reading from the letter to the Ephesians. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promise of the Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemptions as God's own people to the praise of, the, of his glory. I have heard your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what it is, the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power in work to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. And woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> St. Francis of Assisi was born the son of a rich silk merchant. Yet, uh, after a revelation to him, he renounced his wealth. He got rid of his most likely highly manufactured of silk clothing. And he then went around in the rough brown cloak of the poor. And he lived, uh, for the most part, by begging alone. Now, we most often think of St. Francis in terms of cute statues of him holding birds that we put in our garden. And he did love animals. But the focus, the focus of his life and ministry was not animals. It was the poor. Francis sought true solidarity with the poor. A characteristic of all saints like Francis is solidarity. Solidarity at a minimum with Jesus, and then therefore with the poor, the marginalized, and the oppressed, because that is who Jesus was in solidarity with. And the words of Jesus that we hear today in the gospel can be considered a how-to list or a roadmap for living in solidarity with the poor. Markarioi, Markarioi, are you poor? Markarioi means blessing. Yes, it definitely means that. That's how we translate it. But we don't really talk like that uh, anymore. Uh, blessed are you, Judy. It would be an odd thing to say. Uh, actually, Markarioi has a number of meanings, other meanings, uh, you know, highly fortunate, happy, even congratulations. Jesus is saying, you who are poor are actually fortunate, or even congratulations for being hungry. And that is a weird, funny thing to say, and for most of his listeners, it would have been beyond funny. It would have been shocking. They lived with po poverty, hunger, oppression, and sad sadness, saying congratulations for all that makes no sense. But in the broader picture, if 
you look beyond the scope of anyone's individual life of God's reign, it actually makes a lot of sense. In the reign of God, Jesus said, there would be a lot of big reversals, incredible reversals. The last shall be first, and the first last. The humble shall be exalted, and the mighty cast down from their thrones. I admit that if you're living under and suffering under poverty, under oppression, under whatever, that knowing that, well, down the road in the great realization of the kingdom, all is going to be well, that's cold comfort in many ways, especially for anyone who's been poor or hungry or oppressed all their lives and they don't see any way out of it. But we have to remember that Jesus paired these statements with a list of woes. Uh, there's a series of warnings woe be it to the rich to the full, to the happy the word woe expresses grief then and now it also conveys the sense that Jesus is feeling sorry for the fortunate it's a lot like alas alas, alas, alas you who are rich now there's no further reward for you in the kingdom of heaven alas we also tend to hear, at least most of us, these, these woes as kind of scary. If you fall into the fortunate category, it sounds like you have no way to escape the wrath of God. Minimally, it is shocking, and the shocking warning makes you realize that you actually have abundance. If you feel like, oops, whoa, I don't know about that, you have abundance. You recognize it. And the recognition of abundant life which is really any life predominantly free of poverty, hunger, oppression. That's a first good step. That recognition is a first good step to committing yourself to follow Jesus, just as the saints did. Perhaps Jesus was trying to shock both those with abundance and those with nothing. Shock the people who are beaten down by poverty and oppression to realize that that is not what God wants for them. God, that's not what God wants for anybody. Poverty, oppression, that is not part of God's plan. And God actually intends for all people to live in abundance. And knowing that, if you've just lived a life of being beaten down by any one of a number of things, just knowing that's not what God wants for you. But that can be empowering. On the other hand, if you're already empowered, you're called not just to recognize your privilege, but to truly be in solidarity, to reverse, to be in solidarity with those who lack. I wonder if the shocking words were not just shocking, but an invitation an invitation into a new way of life and a new world, the creation of a new world. One part of this is give to everyone who begs from you. Now, most commentators call this hyperbole. And, I, you know, you could get out of it that way if you want. Uh, if you actually did this, it is true, you'd end up with no money. But that was Jesus. No money, living in solidarity with the poor, Asking for his food, asking for lodging. Once, uh, for Lent, I decided to follow this commandment literally. Give to everyone who asks. Now, I, I took it very literally. Jesus didn't stipulate a quantity <laughs> that you had to give to everyone who asked. And after a few first few days of doing this, I started keeping dollar bills in my pocket uh, so that I wouldn't be stuck handing out whatever was in my wallet if I only had a 20 or I only had a 50. This is a little bit of a sort of workaround, I guess, but it was interesting. The practice of, of making sure I had something to give away really made me much more aware of my own abundance, of the, the fact that I could do such a thing every morning. And then I saw every single person on the street, uh, I couldn't ignore them because I had to give to them. And I thought about them constantly. And then loading up on dollar bills and quarters and any other small change I could get in my pockets every morning, 
really, I realized I was starting the day every day thinking about those in need before I really did much, before I went out the door, certainly. And then talking to people and seeing them every day, beginning to get to know them. All of that forced me to realize they were there. I couldn't just sort of walk by with a sorry. And also made me realize I needed to be part of the change that would keep pe this from being needed, to keep people, you know, to change the world so that there was no need for begging. So what if we think of the reversal that Jesus preached? The hungry fed, the rich receiving no more. What if we think of that as bringing about true solidarity? And the great inversion of the reign of God fully realized everyone will be in solidarity with everyone else. There'll no longer be unseen, unheard, uncared about people because it, the people who might have been doing that are now in solidarity with them. The marginalized will no longer live in the shadows. Those who avoided such misfortunes will now understand them fully, will now have more love for those who do not have what they do. The reign of God, at a minimum, will bring about solidarity. And because Jesus said also that this reign of God is breaking in now, it's an invitation for those whose suffering is minimal <clears throat> to live in solidarity with others. The word solidarity uh, within theological circles is actually a little bit of jargon in a way. Uh, it's a, a key concept of liberation theology. And the brilliant insight of liberation theology, uh, really the most fundamentally brilliant insight that it has, is that salvation is not just getting into heaven later. Salvation isn't just a matter of waiting until you die and hoping you get into heaven. Salvation is also salvation from poverty and fear and oppression now, here. The Reverend Dr. John Cater, who taught at my seminary when I was there, became a real mentor of mine. I kind of want to be him when I grow up. Um, and he, in one of his books, he's written a great definition of solidarity. And it's a long quote. A church that accepted the victims of death as the focal point of mission and ministry would learn to establish priorities in light of the cries of the poor and the cries of others longing for God's new heaven and new earth. That is, the interests of the church would reflect the interests of those whose grasp on life abundant is the most precarious. This is what Latin American Christ Christians mean by solidarity, making the interest of the victims their own, end quote. Solidarity is a way of being. It's a spiritual orientation. It's making the interests of the victims, of the marginalized, our interests. And when we do that, we are reversing things. We are changing the normal way of being. It has to be something we do, something we do. We have to, something we practice. We undertake practices to make solidarity with the poor shape how we live. Now, you don't all have to do what I did that one Lent and give to everyone who asks, which notably I've never done again for Lent. But one thing you can do is pledge. One thing you can do is pledge. When you pledge, here at Trinity specifically, 8% maybe more depending on next year's budget. 8% goes directly to the poor through the way we disperse that money in uh, outreach grants and, and other uh, support. And other portions of your pledge support our work to build a more just society in which the reign of God is realized. And so like putting dollars or quarters in your pocket before you go out, pledging a proportion of your income before you set the rest of your agenda reminds you of human need greater than yours, reminds you of the abundance you have, turns your interests from your own to outward, and then every time you pay that pledge, it's an act of solidarity, even if small, and it's an important start. 
There is a part of me that wants to be like St. Francis and renounce all that I have to live and serve the poor. When I talk like that, it gives my wife hives. <laughs> and certainly it would remove the constant tension I have of living very comfortably while preaching about the tragedy of poverty. But I've come to realize that maybe I'm not called to be that kind of saint, to be that kind of hero. Because the world also needs advocates. The world needs change agents, people who are empowered to make change, advocates for the poor, the hungry, the sick, the marginalized, the demonized. The world there has power in it, but so that we may be advocates. And we could all be that. We can't all be like Francis of Assisi. But we can find ways to be like him. For he was a saint of God in solidarity with all people. And we hope to be one too. Please stand as you are able, and on page 9 of your bulletin, let us reaffirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. All good and merciful God, you indeed are faithful to the covenant with your people. Please hear the prayers of your people. Heavenly Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Fill it with all truth, in all truth, with all peace. 
We pray for our bishops, Justin, Michael, and Jennifer, and for the clergy of this diocese. And we pray for Trinity, that we may have generosity of spirit. We give thanks for the gift of all your saints, especially Will of Broad, Leo of Rome, Martin of Tours, and Charles Semyon. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, guide the nations of this world into the way of justice and truth, and establish among them that peace which is the fruit of righteousness, that they may become your beloved community. We pray for all those countries and areas in turmoil, without adequate food, water, without hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, give us all a reverence for the earth and its climate as your own creation, that we may live more simply, using its resources rightly, in the service of others, and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. We pray for this upcoming election. We pray that all those who want to vote are able to vote, and there is peace at all places. Lord, in your mercy, <laughs> Heavenly Father, we pray for the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray especially for the following. Liz, Paul, Katie, Nick and Kelly, Brett, Barbara, Tim, Tom, Maggie, Sam, Judith, Andrew, Corey, John, Jonathan, Gloria, Linda, Beth, Joan, Tandy, Lee, John Moore, Brenda, Erica, Mary Ann, Noel, Mary, Stephen Gretchen, Maynard, Gates, Keith, Claudia, Carol, Evan, and Betsy, and any others we may now name. Lord, in your mercy. In our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief but life eternal. We pray especially for Juan and all the faithful departed. And we pray for those in mourning, especially the families of the departed. Lord, in your mercy, for whom or for what shall we now pray? Lord, hear the prayers of your people and what we have asked faithfully. Grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess the sin against you, God's word and deed, by loving your
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Beloved children of God, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Welcome to everyone, and a, and a big welcome to anyone who is here for the first time or returning after a long time, checking us out, just visiting. Uh, please try to catch me uh, or Anna over here after the service. Anna will be over on this side, and if you really want to have an in-depth chat, uh, we're going to send you there, um, and uh, I'll be at the back of the church. Uh, I do draw your attention to the announcements. But I want to mention a couple of things that uh, aren't in there. There was uh, our annual diocesan convention was yesterday. Um, that's a that's a where in the diocese we make a lot of the diocesan decisions that our vestry makes here. We send elected representatives of every parish. A couple of big things happened there. Uh, one is that our own Dika Connie was honored for her long service as the Archdeacon of the Diocese, and uh, which she has recently stepped down from, and her just service as deacon to the diocese by the bishop. Uh, and so make sure you congratulate her and thank her uh, for her service. Yeah. And the convention we pa uh, passed a couple of pretty substantive resolutions. One, uh, it, that was spearheaded by Deacon Connie and, and other deacons to um, ensure that every diocese, every parish that has a deacon 72 years of age or less uh, is paid a not thousands and thousands of dollars, but a certain amount which allows them to be put on the church's uh, pension fund. Um, which actually has more benefits to it than just pensions. So uh, it was a really important justice initiative uh, that I'm proud that, that Duke and Connie was a part of. Also, a, a second resolution committed every parish in the diocese to doing uh, anti-racism work and to intentionally figuring out what exactly that work's going to be and holding ourselves accountable for it. Uh, and it's rare that I actually see uh, approval by parishes to force themselves to do something. They usually don't want to do that, but this uh, resolution passed and uh, it was supported uh, by an impassioned speech by our own Nate Johnson, who's sitting right over here, who you should also applaud. And uh, he was the only lay person to speak in favor of that. And he talked a lot about what we were doing. And the thing passed unanimously pretty much immediately after that. So correlation is causation sometimes. Uh, so thank you, Nate. Uh, and then just please check out the other announcements. If you are interested, actually, in working on justice issues, solidarity issues, our Commission on Compassion, Peace, and Reconciliation, or CPR, has several sub subcategories of justice issues that we work on and one is health and mental health access and they are looking for more task force members so if you're interested if those topics make you uh you feel strongly about them you're impassioned about them uh, please do that and then today is our closing day of our annual pledge drive and so chad please come up and have a word about that thank you uh good morning everybody can you hear me all right yeah. great so uh you know um I was going to start today with just a quick update about the pledge drive, but I felt the need to comment on that wonderful homily because I too went through a very strong period of my post-college years wanting to be like St. Francis or St. Julian Norwich, thinking it would be easier to give this all up and live the contemplative life of a saint, but that wasn't cut out for me either. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and, you know, there's other ways to, you know, maybe live out those goals in your life. And I think one of them is pledging and doing the work you can towards the greater good of our community. And many people have responded to our pledge drive so far, even though we're at the end of it now, I'll just give an update. Um, we've got 38 units pledging so far with two new units, so we're growing. Uh, we've got over $146,000 pledged, so it's not too late to contribute and give your pledges if you haven't already. And if you've never pledged before, I'm still here to encourage you to, to give it a try. Pledges of all sizes matter and count, and we need anyone and everyone who wants to pledge. So uh, please give it a try if you haven't done it before. Uh, I've only been pledging for a few years myself, and it's been powerful experience. Um, so yeah, that's all I have for you. And that's, this will be the last you hear from me too. So thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for all the work on that. And if you haven't received a pledge card, you should be, you should be able to get one very easily. Did they get into the bulletins? Right on. So you have no excuse people. Um, so let us ascribe to the Lord, the honor due his name, bring offerings and come into his courts.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessings. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into your, our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the, abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, the prisoner's freedom to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift to those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you we bless you. We give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup <clears throat> may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ, reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs and matriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with Willibrord, Leo, 
Martin and Charles, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. In the name of you and the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is upon you now and will remain with you always. Amen. Amen.